Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for participating in the first flight alumni panel, What I Wish I Knew in College. Um, we want to welcome you to UNT. We want to welcome you to the Career Center. Uh, today's session includes alumni from a variety of industries and backgrounds, and we're very grateful for the time that they're taking today to support you and encourage you on your way to success. So I would like to introduce uh, Christine Sanders. Uh, she is the educational coordinator at the Greater Arts Council. Desiree Johnson, the assistant to the Dean at School of Arts and Humanities at University of Dallas. Jennifer Matewala, she is the consultant for unclaimed property at True Partners Consulting. And Julie Chickering Albert, the VP Global People at NTT Data. So, in this session, we want to hear from you. We love questions. Please feel free to type things in the chat. And at this time, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to uh, Christine and um, hear um, any anything that she wants to share with our new students. So again, thank you for um, being here today. We look forward to hearing more about your career journey. I think the most important thing to realize um, is you go to school for one thing. That's not always where you end up. Um, my career path changed several times. I went to I changed my major three times <laughs> to start with. So I went from architecture to interior design to visual art studies. I taught art for 15 years and then now I work in galleries. So I work at the Greater Denton Arts Council. It's inside the Patterson Appleton Arts Center downtown Denton and I'm the education coordinator. So I still do education. I still do art. Um, I just now do it in a different setting and have a completely different role in the things that I do on a daily basis. All of the things I've done I've enjoyed, um, but they have all, you know, kind of been a progression, I guess, from uh, one thing to another and in the different times of my life, the things that were important to me uh, led me to do different jobs. And I would say that to be here now is something that fits me now, but would not have fit me right out of college. So all those other things were important things to do along the way. And I, my big, I think, bit of advice would be to try as many things as possible. Internships, volunteer, because one thing you don't want to do is... Um, go to school for a very long time and realize you do not like what you ended up um, <laughs> getting out of school to do. And you need to, to enjoy what you do. It's important, it makes, makes it uh, worthwhile. I will say the biggest thing to remember or to, to think about while in college is your resources. Um, I was a non-traditional student. I transferred in as a junior. And um, I went, I chose to go to junior college first, and then I transferred to UNT. And my, in undergraduate, I did not utilize my resources because I was a non-traditional transfer student. I went to class and then I went straight home, took a nap and then went to work. Um, I got my degree in public affairs and community service, my undergrad, and I knew immediately what I wanted to do. Um, I wanted to be a director of assessments and operations for a nonprofit organization, and I had my mindset on how I was going to get there. I am currently the executive assistant to the dean at the University of North, the University of Texas at Dallas. Um, I did not know this was possible, <laughs> but I love my job. Um, I love my career choice and my career path. Similar to what Christine said, you never know where you're going to go and how you're going to get there. Um, my graduate, I chose to go to graduate school at UNT as well. That is when I started utilizing my resources that I had learned about the career center, the different um, learning centers, the different um, community centers that they have. Like Christine said, volunteering, being a part of things. I got to help with freshmen move in. Um, I made friends with different faculty, different staff, things like that. That for me opened doors. Networking opened doors for where I am now. 
Um, and I currently have, again, I, I love what I do, but I currently am still networking and making those connections because my goal and my mind has not moved off of that goal of being a director for a nonprofit organization. That's where my heart is. And I still volunteer with nonprofit organizations. Um, so I would say my biggest thing is definitely networking and using your resources. Hello, everyone. Um, I, I guess, could say um, very similar to Des. I also was a non-traditional student. I went to community college my first two um, years of school. So when I transferred to UNT, I was actually very fortunate to have met Amy um, very on my like start of my junior year and I'm actually super glad that I did get to get meet her and get close to her because she kind of led me through the right path of again actually using those resources that are available the career center um having a having like a um networking start to build up with not only students but also professors and that's definitely something that I'm very fortunate I did do um, starting straight from from my junior year when I started at UNT um, and I definitely have to say it was a big advantage um, not only did I get to connect with my professors which I think that is one of the biggest advice I would tell students is to really connect with professors especially ones that are you find very interesting like their backgrounds or either the career path they had before they were actually professors. Again, because you are trying to network and figure out what it is that you want to do once you graduate from college. So it's good to know different people um, and know their backgrounds because again, nobody knows who knows who and they definitely will um, connect you to the right person, especially if you open up to them and tell them what is it that you're actually interested in looking for. All right, so I think you're going to hear a, a recurring theme, um, and that is, it is, it, it is networking, um, and um, that's that is it, you know, getting to know your professors, which means not sitting on the back row. I mean, I'm still on the front row, but you know, be be engaged in your classes, get to know your professors. Um, if you're Depending on if, if you have the time to really get involved on campus, uh, campus organizations, um, or you know just getting involved in the UNT community, because um, you, it, as as Jennifer said, um, you it, the network that you build, you don't know what their network holds, um, and you know through your life, you need to just continue to build that. Um, because it's a when Des is is the director of, of a nonprofit, you know Des, you know where, where you, that connection may may come in handy with something that that you that you want to accomplish. Um, so networking, getting involved on campus, um, uh, um, getting you know from your freshman year knowing about the Career Service Center and getting to know them. I waited till my senior year, like oh crap, I need a job, I need help. I wish I would have gotten involved and in, 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 um, networked with the Career Service Center, you know, really, really, really from, from day one. Um, so, I mean, the UNT offers so many resources. Um, and so in, you're getting a great opportunity this week to really learn about them. So take advantage of every opportunity um, that, that you have. Um, I was a sociology major because I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, it gave for me, it gave me a, a I, you know, gave me a good way to um, a well-rounded education, so I could learn how to think and and um, come up and problem solve for myself. Um, so you know, I've used that in in various, um, you know, I've been a consultant. I'm now in HR. Um, so I guess the other piece of uh, piece of advice is. Um, you are, um, sometimes things will happen and opportunities will come your way um, that will uh, your change your, your, your uh, career trajectory, trajectory, but know where you want to go um, because you are more in control of your, your, your in, in control of how, what you do these next four or so years um, and you're in control um, of your career as well, more, more, more than you think you are. So that's my advice. 
Okay, sometimes, uh, and you know, Marcy and, and Amy, really anybody, sometimes we get questions about things like time management or how to, how to handle stress or uh, meet obligations when there's, you know, so many things to, to keep up with and so many, so many deadlines and perhaps, you know, working. Do you have any suggestions or things that worked for you to help you just balance everything while you were in school? So I will say I am a very, <laughs> I'm laughing because it's what I do now. Uh, I'm a very organized person. <laughs> I used to keep a desk calendar at home. I had a planner in my backpack. I had a planner in my glove box of the car. I am that person with color coordinated everything, highlighters, pencils, pens, all of that. I wrote notes to myself. Um, so my organization, which leads me into my master's degree, <laughs> which is in leadership organization. <laughs> um, I, I kept very organized, but it's a discipline. Um, mm -hmm. And that's not something that I wish that they taught us these essential things like college 101 in high school. Those are not things that they teach you um, in, in high school or prior to college. Once you get to college, you really have to have the discipline to remember your class schedule, remember what classes you have, homework for on what days, what assignments are due, what extra credit you may need to do. Also, <laughs> while utilizing your resources, like the Career Center, remember when the career fairs are available, remember when they're doing resume reviews, remember when your professor's open hours are for their office. Um, I, I definitely utilized planners, notebooks, mm -hmm regular loose pieces of paper, it, it, it helps to write things down. Um, as much as most people are like, oh, I'll just remember, it helps to write it down. I also, if you're similar to me, I am a hands-on learner. So typing something in my phone did not necessarily help me remember as well as physically writing it down on pen and paper. Um, so that's just one of my tips on how I organized and worked my way through. My one tip is always go to class. That, that just always go to class. <laughs> and, and, and it does write things down, you know, have, whether it's an electronic organizer, um, go to class, write down your priorities, know what is due when. Um, and sometimes you need to think about you're doing, you're doing well in this class, you have assignment in this class, where do you need to spend your time? Um, so prioritize um, where, where, where you spend your time, but just go to class. Uh, I wanted to add something onto the, the question about the memories of, of UNT um, question. Um, one of my fondest memories uh, about UNT was actually working in the wood shop um, for CVAD. So I did have like a few on-campus jobs and I was teaching here as well. Um, so I would, you know, think about working on campus too and, and getting some of that experience before you graduate. And that working on campus was actually a, one of the funnest experiences I've had in my, my career. Um, I got to teach, work in the wood shop, work with other students, and ultimately that really prepared me um, for the job I have now. So this is kind of, let's reverse it. So we've been talking a lot about what students can do. If you can recall maybe perhaps what you would have liked the people you interacted with at UNT, whether it's a career center or faculty could have done to maybe meet you better where you were or what advice can you give back to UNT, the people that are working with students day to day so we can be better in tune with, uh, with needs and try to help students be successful. I'm gonna say that when I was going to UNT, I was also commuting. And it sounds like I wasn't alone. Um, and I think having the staff understand 
or take the time to talk to me. And I did have some teachers that were very invested in who each student were and the other things going on in their life that affected their school. And I, because of changing my major three times and commuting, I also got married in there and had two kids before I graduated. So it was, um, there were sometimes a lot of things going on in my life outside of going to school and I was working. And um, so I was a, a very busy person. And sometimes if I went for um, help with scheduling, um, when I went to the, to the dean's office or uh, went for help with scheduling or um, financial aid, sometimes those people could be a little impatient. And um, just to remember that there might be a lot going on in that person's life. Um, and if there is a lot going on in your life, you might need to open up and tell people that there's a lot going on in your life because you can't expect them to read your mind. And if you let them know, you might get a little bit more patience once they realize, look, this person's buried and they're just doing good to get here. Um, and I think that that, I don't think I was alone in that. I met a lot of students when I was going to school who were also in similar boats as me with other things going on in their lives. So, and all that being said, school was still so much fun. And once I had kids, it was even more fun. I couldn't wait to go every day, like, yay, leave the kids behind, go back to class. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, you know, my daughter actually uh, attended UNT as a baby and then graduated from UNT a few years ago. So, yeah, <laughs> it was full circle for us. That's great. Yeah, my son is an is an alum of UNT too, and having a very successful career. So, um, it's really wonderful to see people move on from these this space and and do great things. So, thank you for sharing. I was just going to mention I went to Stephen F. Austin State University in East Texas for my bachelor's, um, but it would always be so daunting to me. Um, I got my master's at UNT, but in terms of a bachelor's degree, starting a class, it would be so unnerving not knowing what the tests were going to be like and the style of the professor. So it would make me so nervous, like what was ahead, because I could make it or break it. But then once you had that first test, I feel like you got to know the style of the professor, the types of tests they gave, that how hard the questions were. And then for the most part, I feel like UNT and schools like that, it's usually not just a midterm and a final, like where it's 50% of your grade. You, usually um, it's like four tests and then maybe a quiz in there, or some extra credit, some other variables. So I think just get to know, pace yourself because you'll know on that first exam how hard you need to work for subsequent exams and other things. And of course, talk to your professor, go to their office hours because they'll know you're trying. And I can't tell you how many times I had like an 89 in a class. And if I went to all the classes I did in the extra credit, they would always bump me up regardless if I totally like really earned that point um, just because they remembered I went to, to class and worked hard. Um, I would say that something that I hope universities are now thinking about um, especially with the climate that we're in today, is that we have so many more non-traditional students. Um, similar to what Christine said, our professors have to understand that we are students, but we're human first, and we have other lives, and we have other things going on, um, and we are learning, um, especially as again, entering a college setting, you're learning how to navigate the world without your parents or without your usual support system. Or if you're fortunate to have that support system, now you have to figure out how to work in those college resources and networking and your professors into that life. Sometimes I had professors who they were very narrow with this is the class that you're in and this is the class I'm teaching and this is where all your focus needs to be. 
that's not always the case because similar to what Julie said, if I'm making an A in your class, but I'm making a C in another class, all my attention is not going to be in this class because this is not where I need the most help. So I may not be able to come to your mandatory office hours because I need to go to my C classes mandatory office hours. <laughs> um, so I think very similar to what Christine said. I just we just need professors who understand that we're human and extending grace can go a long way. I'm going to say real quick that goes both ways too. For your teachers, you don't know what's going on in their life either for the professors. Um, I'm now friends with several professors. So um, when you think that they are being grouchy or they are not being nice or thoughtful, um, asking them if they're okay or what's going on in their life might also go a long way. Just, you know, the golden rule works. It's always a two-way street, communication and taking care of each other. Add that. <laughs> yeah, it just sounds like the importance of knowing yourself and working hard to build, you know, relationships. And um, there are a lot of resources at UNT in so many various ways from, you know, whether it's counseling or academic support. So um, we encourage you to let us know what you need and so we can, we can help because there is probably something that can be done to, to maybe assist um, anybody in a difficult situation. So I think that's great advice. So thinking about the transition from when you graduated to that first job or the first job out of college, um, since we're the career center and we talk a lot about uh, skills that employers find valuable. Can you share some of maybe the most um, important attribute or skill that you were able to, that helped you get right into your job and kind of learn the ropes, so to speak? Because um, we talk to students a lot about, okay, maybe there's ways that you can gain these skills now. And then when you start your job, you're not going to know everything. You're going to learn the company, the organization, but um, maybe some of those soft skills or communication skills that really helped you um, be successful when you were first starting out. I think one of the things is um, being comfortable with ambiguity um, and it, it, being comfortable with ambiguity. Um, it's a, as you know, in my role, you know, I would love to, when someone starts to say, this is exactly what you're going to do your, your first year. Big companies, this, well, it, all companies, we can't, you know, they're, you know, you know, uh, real world things happen. Um, the pandemic happened. Um, so that completely changed how we manage the workforce. Um, so being comfortable with not knowing exactly what you're going to be doing next, um, is at least in, in my experience, is, 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 one of, is one of the key things and just that, that, that flexibility um, of, yes, the flexibility in dealing well with not knowing what's next. I'd like to add a little bit to what you said, Julie. Um, Definitely what I learned when I um, started my role right now, I actually just graduated last year from UNT. So I was a, a 2020 graduate. Um, and when I started, the big thing that they told me was to be very open um, and kind of the analogy that my director told me was be a sponge, um, be open to learning different processes, um, that maybe the way you are used to doing things may be different, or you, they'll suggest a different um, strategy of approaching something. So I definitely learned um, that when I started, I did in a way have to be a sponge. I had to be open to learning different ways of doing stuff. And not only that, um, also just asking a lot of questions. That's one thing that they um, made sure as a consultant um, there's a lot of things that I didn't know when I started the job and we just had to be comfortable actually 
approaching whoever it was that we needed to approach to ask that question because if not, I mean, it would never get answered. I think um, a lot of students when they graduate, it seems that like they're in such a rush to like find the career, like get in that position. And um, I, you know, I, I would say take your time and, and look for meaningful, um, you know, positions that will kind of set you up in the career path that you, you want to do. I know I understand that, you know, you have to make money um, in some way, but you know, just make sure that your career path, you're thinking about it and you're taking the next steps to your, your, your jobs. But, um, but yeah, I would say, you know, students don't rush, don't, don't feel like you have to find something immediately, um, you know, that is in line with your major because it does take time. Just, you know, be open to, um, be open for, for things taking time, finding that right, um, that right job for you. I was going to say similar to Jennifer and Marcy, uh, communication and patience. Um, I know that the Career Center offers mock interviewing, whether formal or informal. Interviewing can make or break a candidate. Honestly, that's just the truth. Um, so utilize, again, those resources like the Career Center as far as communicating um, earlier, someone on the panel had said, if, if you're going through something, communicate with your professor. Again, there are resources if you need um, help or assistance with anything, those resources, but you have to communicate. For patients, I originally, when I graduated, I landed a part-time job doing what I wanted to do. And it was very stressful. But I knew that eventually, as long as I was dedicated, I utilized the Career Center, I utilized Handshake, and I continuously looked and, and had patience that I would find a full-time job. Um, similar to what Mark said, it may not come automatically. That, that dream job may not come as soon as you think it is. That's in the, in the perfect world, we go to school to land the dream job but we go to school to land it. That doesn't mean that we're gonna get it as soon as we leave. So just being open-minded, making sure you're communicating because again, that can be stressful. Having patience and going through that process can be very stressful. But even as an alumni, we are still afforded certain resources that UNT has available, similar. Amy Hicks, for instance, she you can go to her and she will help you find your career that you're looking for. So just utilizing resources, communicating and being patient is what I would say. Amy, I can ask one of these questions from the chat if you'd like. Um, so what was your biggest challenge that you faced in your role in industry that might help the students in attendance, you know, later on to anticipate those things that they may face? So two different industries, one being a teacher. Um, I was a teacher for the first 15 years uh, after I graduated. And um, I would say that's a challenge in itself. <laughs> Teaching is a challenge um, and you can't do it alone. Uh, and that rings true in the job that I have now. I think that um, trying to do everything by yourself, trying to be an island, trying to be that strong is difficult in, I would assume, any position. But for a teacher, you need um, you need your friends, you need your fellow teachers, you need um, other mentors as well, teachers that have been there longer. Uh, you just have to have someone to lean on, someone to talk to about what's going on, someone to say, you know, am I losing my mind? Is this right? Uh, and I do that now in this in this job as well. And I actually have four interns working for me right now, all from UNT. Yep. And um, I couldn't survive without them. I 
I rely on them so heavily and uh, fellow employees because we do a lot of really big events here. Uh, we put on a lot of great activities for the city and um, I can't possibly make all of my ideas come to fruition without other people and their ideas to help make my ideas better and to help get all the um, leg work done because I don't have enough legs. <laughs> so um, just, just knowing that you don't need to do everything by yourself, what you need to do is make good connections, good companions, um, and you know, utilize the people that are around you. Yeah, similar to that, uh, I'm a yeah, firm believer in you, sometimes you have to fake it till you make it. Um, and you don't, you're not going to know everything, um, but you also have to know when to raise your hand and say, I need help. Um, and it's okay. And, you know, you know, whether it's with a mentor or someone saying, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and so that, that's anyway, so, um, ra raise your hand. Don't be afraid to raise your hand and say, I need, I need help. Um, because it's better to say, I need help in the beginning. Um, then get getting to the end of a project and, and, and it, and it do, doesn't go well. Yeah, I was just going to say something that might be helpful to some of you. If you go into education, something that I've struggled with is explaining to people that have been in corporate that education is completely different. <laughs> so there's, there's not uh, a lot of wiggle room with salary. There's budgets are extremely different. So I think just knowing your, your industry and where, where you are, and it, it may be a completely different ball game from where you move on to. So I think we've tackled most of these. Um, is there any other things about your story or experience that any of y'all would like to share that you haven't already that might be helpful to our students? I would say enjoy. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> definitely nothing to queer, but um, go to the football games, go, go to the basketball games, go to just enjoy university life. Um, and so it, it is, so that, that's my other, nothing to do with career, but um, uh, yes, do as much as you can. Um, if you are, uh, if, if you're commuting, still try to go to activities on campus. If you live on, if you live on campus, I think all freshmen, have to live on campus now or supposed to. Um, anyway, enjoy the campus. It's a, it's a great one. And, and Denton. Denton, Denton, Denton has um, a lot to offer, so. That was basically what I was going to say was enjoy it while it lasts. Um, next thing you know, you're a senior, you're about to graduate. So um, I guess that's one thing that I, I would have to say I wish I would have. Um, being a commuter, it again, would usually just be a part where I would just attend class. Um, and then once class is over, usually just go to work or um, come home, whatever the case might be, but um, definitely enjoy it. it. It's always fun to go out to the games, to be part of clubs or any sort of social event that they have to offer. Um, I'd like to say in, in closing, don't be afraid to change your path. Um, I think that <laughs> obviously it took me a long time to graduate and I changed my mind several times, but I really, when I started school, thought I was dead set on what I started with and I was never going to change it. It's what I wanted to do since the seventh grade. Why would I, you know, why would I change that path? But, um, when you feel something is not right and you're not enjoying it and, um, you're not even 20 or you're in your really early 20s, it's not too late. It's never too late. Follow your heart, change your path, do what you enjoy. And don't think that you just have to graduate as fast as possible and, and get a job and move on because you don't want to do that if that's not going to be where you're happy. Um, so don't be afraid to make changes. You're young and that's the best time to start making changes. <laughs> so yeah, follow your heart. Um, my final advice would be to utilize the career center. <laughs>
Uh, I did not do that in undergrad, but I did it in grad. Um, and they have amazing, amazing benefits. They have a job shadowing program, resume review, mock interviews, workshops. You, It's similar to what everybody said. When you go to a workshop, you get to know people who are in a, have a similar mindset as you. So you can, if you network and you communicate, you get to meet friends. Um, I remember I went to one of the networking um, events that the career center was having, and I'm still close with two friends that I met there because we both were, we were all similar in what we wanted to do. Um, one of them actually works here with me now. So you never know who you might meet. I, I met someone at a football game. I met, you know, it, you just never know. Um, college is definitely, it's a fun ride. It's an experience. It is an emotional roller coaster. But I will say, when you look back on college, I would not change my route, my method of how I got here. It was amazing. Well, this was really wonderful just hearing just about all of you. So, you know, Jennifer, Des, Christine, Julie, uh, thank you so much for just being yourself and talking to students at UNT. I encourage everybody to contact the Career Center if we're not the place you need to be um, for your specific question, we'll, we'll help you get there. And we're definitely here to help. We wish you all the best. And we're just super glad that you're here to start your journey. So again, panelists, thank you. And we appreciate you. Have a great afternoon.